awesome. And, and you know, get a couple more wins, and they're going to be moving up. They're not going to stay at number three. This team can really play. So they're going to find themselves moving up in that standings. And they have proved it in the last two games, going three overtimes last week in Seattle to beat University of Seattle. And Thursday night really put on a defensive show against New Mexico State, the defending four-time Black Champions. Well, they dominated. They beat them up 54-51. They really wore them down. I think defensively, you're right. They took them out of their offensive flow. They shot zero for 13 from the three. And then with that aggressive play, GC taking the ball to the hole. It was a great, great game. And the two people that really established things offensively, the first half of the low conversation. Yeah, she did a great job. You know, she shot uh, 13 and 50 points at 10. down the stretch and she had eight of her 15 points in that second half so we're ready to go for starting lineups the anthem and of course our invocation let's send it to our pa announcer doc Winninger. good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the beautiful gcu arena and this afternoon's women's basketball game between the vaqueros of ut rio grande valley and your grand canyon university antelope Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that you please rise, and gentlemen, please remove your hats as we start this afternoon with a word of prayer. Today's prayer will be given by Tim Griffin, GCU's Dean of Students. Would you join me in prayer, please? Our God and Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for these athletes, the coaches, the staff, the officials. May they know your joy and peace as they compete today. Thank you for these fans. Thank you for all that will participate in today's event. May you bless them each, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this afternoon by GCU's own Thundering Herd Pet Band. And now, let's meet the players and coaches competing in this afternoon's game. First for the visiting team, the UT Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros. A 5'6 guard, number one, Amara Graham. A 5'8 guard, number five, Jamika Dowell. 5'11 guard, number 11, Quinn Huggins. A six foot forward, number 21, Crescentia Sampson. 5'11 forward, number 32, Madison Northcutt. Head coach for the Vaqueros is Lane Lord. Starting lineup for your GCU Lowe. Head guard, a 5'5 senior from Hawaii, India, number. 
number four, Kavita Agula. At point guard, a 5'9 freshman from Barcelona, Spain, number five, Laura Piera. At guard, a 5'9 freshman from Bakersfield, California, number 11, Taylor Caldwell. At forward, a six-foot senior from Antioch, California, number 23, A.J. Sifa. And in center, a six-foot senior from Blaine, Minnesota, number 53, Sharon Miller. Head coach for the Lopes is Nicole Powell, assisted by Nikki Blue, Taylor High, and Brad Blankstein. So those are your starting lineups brought to you by Dignity Health. Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. So that is the pregame huddle for Nicole Powell's GCU Lopes. And there you see your starters. And even though RGV goes with three forwards, there is a size advantage for GCU. And I think one of the keys in that size advantage, Tom Kuyper, is they want to make sure that Sharon Miller stays in the game. She was battling foul trouble the entire time Thursday night. They need a big game out of her. Yeah, it was unfortunate that she could stay in the game. But yeah, when you talk about those keys, number one, you can't find the feeling. Right away, they've won two big games. They knocked off Seattle, they knocked off New Mexico State. Those are great wins. Stay with that feeling. I like to move it, move it, and made it. Great game Thursday night defensively, and they've got to do the same thing again now. And then the third one is stand tall, dominate inside again. They can do it again. UTR is a little bit afraid of their size. And they're going right to work. The pass inside and right off the bat, right on cue. Sharon Pillar gets into the scoring column. She had just two field goals and four points against the Aggies Thursday night. They'd love to see her bounce back. Now, RGV going into their weave. Here's a drive by the point guard, Amara Graham. Gets it to Crescentia Sanson, who is coming home. Inside the spin move by Madison Northcutt. Started left and spun right and gets it into tie to two. Wow, that was a nice move, too. That looked really nice. They don't want to let that get started underneath. No, they don't. And both bigs going to work early offensively. We're tied at two. Cephas again going in for Miller. This time as she started to move to her left, Northcutt anticipated and was able to stand in front and force the travel. Yeah, she kind of shuffled her feet. She was really kind of digging in. And as she was digging in, kind of shuffled. You saw Lane, you see Lane Lord, the first year head coach for RGV, but he's got a storied history on the D2 level. He led. Pittsburgh State to five different NCAA Division II tournament appearances in the last seven years before moving here to Edinburgh, Texas to start this year. The miss by RGV and now GCU trying to go back to work. We played a little over a minute here at GCU Arena. Glad you're with us, Jim Howe, Tom Kuyper, as they finish out the inaugural conference homestand of 2019. Pieta with a drive, keeps on coming, throws it up, score it, count it, foul. Send her to the free throw line, aggressive move by Pieta, the native of Barcelona, Spain, as she just kept on coming, anticipating the defense that didn't come. That's what I'm talking about. They did that so well against the Aggies Thursday night. You got to keep taking that ball to the hole. A lot of things happen. You get fouled. You put someone else in foul trouble. Uh, so take the ball to go. You can't live on the perimeter. When they can slash, they can be very effective offensively. Taylor Caldwell certainly proved that in the second half against NMSU two nights ago. So now Pieta trying to capitalize on the three-point play. Can't do it. Scramble for the rebound. And it comes down to the hands of Megan Johnson, who just checked in during that last stop in play. Johnson, a native of Newcastle, Australia. Five foot ten junior. And one of the only junior on this squad. But they have a, a lot of senior experience. And as the loose ball goes to the free throw line, a tie-up. And the possession arrow favors Rio Grande Valley. Nicole Powell in her second year as the head coach led them to their inaugural lock tournament appearance a year ago and would love to make it two for two this March. Double team outside on Quinn Huggins and the reach in foul called on Taylor Caldwell. That's the first team foul of the afternoon for GCU. It'll be a non shooting foul for the Vaqueros. Hey, 
do better on closing in on those gaps. There was a little bit too much in there, and that's why they picked up that foul. Johnson takes a dribble over to the left side, and she is covered in the switch by Kavita Akula. Out front for Amara Graham. She's the point guard. Double teamed out front. Stop the dribble. Give it to Northcutt. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Sampson trying to lob it inside. Sheep has had it. Made the steal, but then throw it right into the lap of Megan Johnson. They exchange turnovers. So that'll reset the shot clock for the Vaqueros. As it's 4-2, GCU holding on to that one possession lead. Caldwell covering outside the three-point stripe. Lob inside, gets to Sampson, goes to the hoop, but the reverse layup won't go. And Miller has the defensive board all the way on. Caldwell in the corner. They move quickly. Here's Cephas. They want to get her moving in the first half. And as she goes up with a shot, it's knocked out of her hand. Cephas wanted the foul. So did head coach Nicole Powell. But instead, it's out of bounds. Ball to the Lopes. Well, you got to keep going to Cephas because she's eventually going to make that happen. Yeah, I don't know if she got that foul, but she's got to keep on trying. Outside jumper not good by Pieta. And here comes the Carroll's trying to tie it up two and a half minutes in. Here's Megan Johnson quickly moving to the left side. And a deal with the defensive assignment on her. Northcutt drives inside, muscle up the shot on Miller. They got it to go. Northcutt got the first step, but the good thing for Miller is she held her ground and did not slap her on the hands. Well, I tell you, Northcutt's feeling it right now. She's taking the ball twice to the hole and scoring on both of them. Akula outside on the arc, give it to Cephas at the high post. Inside, here's Miller working high low, go to the right hand this time. Two for two, for two Sharon Miller. There you go, keep going inside. We talked about it. UTRGV was a little worried about the size underneath with the lopes, and, and now you can see why. So UTRGV will slow it up this time as Graham walks it across the time stripe. Double team trapping defense. Huggins can't do anything with it. They give it to Johnson on the opposite arc. Shot clock is down to six. Nothing going so far for RGV. Johnson forces up a desperation three, and Akula got a piece of it. Miller with the rebound. Here comes GCU trying to build on a two-point edge. Miller out front. The lob over the top. Does it get to Cephas? She fumbles, gets it back. Brings it back out front. Still 18 on the GCU shot clock. Deanna calls out another set play. Comes around the Cephas screen. Sees daylight. Now double teamed out for Miller. From 16, got it. And Shea Rob Miller in the first four minutes is already in search for point total of Thursday night. Well, that, you got to credit Pieta on that because she took the ball the hole, pulled in the defense, and found her teammate Miller outside. Sampson has to get rid of it to Huggins. Two Phoenix natives right there. Huggins will move it inside, scoop it up with the right hand, and get it. First scoring of the night for Millennium High School alum Quinn Huggins. A nice move, too. Nice and smooth. You see her athletic ability shining right there. 8 6. Lopes have had the lead. Now that one goes off the foot of Caldwell. Scramble for the ball. Northcutt got a piece of it, and now Northcutt out in front. She'll go to the hoop and score. So both starting centers for each team. Three field goals and six points, and we're tied at eight. Well, Northcutt is gas. She gave her hand to the. Uh, to her coach saying she wants out. So she'll be coming out on this next dead ball. Well, a lot of size coming in for both teams because Deja Daniel and Carla Balladay ready to check in for the Cole Powell and the Lopes. Cephas moving to the hoop. Shot won't go. Foul happened before the shot. And the foul is whistled on for Cynthia Sampson of the Vaqueros. So a timeout on the floor. And we got a good one so far in this Saturday afternoon special. It's GCU 8, UTRGV 8. Keep it here for more coverage of Lopes basketball on GCU TV. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service.
Feel the thunder in the heart of Phoenix. GCULopes.com. Well, while the Lopes women's basketball team is finishing out their inaugural homestand of the conference season, the first road trip for Dan Marley's Lopes men's basketball team comes to a close tonight in Edinburgh, Texas. They'll take on the Vaqueros of UT Rio Grande Valley, and you can catch it live on ESPN Plus, and you can also catch it on the radio at 15 a.m. at 99.3 FM, The Fanatic, with the radio voice of the Lopes, Michael Potter, tonight, starting at 6, and the Lopes trying to bounce back. What a fantastic game that was Thursday night in that heartbreaking loss. So far, so good. On the women's side, Sharon Miller has come to play. Yeah, she really is. She's three for three underneath. And as we talked earlier, dominating in the paint is what you want to do. And there, she benefits from Pieta taking the ball to the rack. She backed up as her defender went to go guard Pieta. She left her wide open. There's a nice outside shot. Miller getting an early breather. Lopes with the basketball. Deja Daniel is checked in for her. She gets the inbounds pass. And we're past the midpoint of this first quarter. So far, we're knotted up at eight. Daniel at the high post. Carla Balagay is also checked in on the interior. Daniel starts to drive, puts it up. That one off the front of the iron, not good. Balagay tipping for the rebound, but it's saved on the baseline by UTRTV's Michaela Mosley, who also checked in during that last stop in play. Amara Graham quickly up, gets it out front for Adil Turk. Her first shot from three-point range won't go, but the long rebound, Mosley able to corral it, and a first 30 on the shot clock for the Vaqueros. Out front, here's the drive by Turk, going to the hoop with the right hand. Nice pass, nice shot off the glass. And Turk, who normally has been starting for the Vaqueros, coming off the bench and making an immediate impact, the first lead of the game for UTRGV. Well, GCU's got to find a way to stop that penetration. There is no help on that other side. Somebody's got to be there. Now, Daniel, away from the ball, goes down in the lane. Mosley and her both go down. And a whistle and a foul on Michaela Mosley. And you see that last drive by Turk getting the first step. Yeah, see, there was nobody there. She took her defender to the right and, and was left all alone. And no vote came over to help. He just can't do that. So a non-shooting foul. Inbound to Pieta in the corner. Fresh shot clock. As she starts to drive. Cut off the baseline. Throws it cross court. Caldwell now starting to spin. Brings it out front. Here's Taylor Howard, who also checked in for the Lopes. The 5'11 registered freshman from Houston, Texas. Pieta. Out front, Daniel. Shot clock at 10. Open look. Howard banks in a three. Good start for Taylor Howard off the bench. And GCU gets the lead back. The Carrows in the front court. Mosley at the high post. Turns to face the hoop. Drives on Daniel. Kick in the corner for Graham. Graham has not looked for her shot yet. But she can be poking offensively. Now tries the backdoor pass to perfection for Turk, but the shot's too hard off the glass. Lopes dodge a bullet. You mentioned, Tom, they got to cut. They got to cut off that drive, and Turk was able to get another open look. Now, as Caldwell comes around the Balagay screen, Carla Ryder moving as she tried to set that screen call for the offensive foul. Well, see, there you got good ball movement. When you keep passing that ball, when you can pass it in and pass it back out, eventually someone's open. The defense just can't keep up with the ball. Keep the ball moving. So a nip and tuck battle as we expected so far. Keep in mind, in the last five meetings between these two teams dating back three years, none of those battles. None of those ball games have been decided by more than six points. And so far, it is true to form, as we've already had three times. And now dribbling inside, Valeria Tapia, who just checked in, dribbles it off her foot. Another unforced error. Well, any of those errors you just got to take advantage of now. When they turn the ball over, come down and score. Let's see what the Lopes can do with it. So the Lopes with Piera, Balagay, Kavita Kulu check back in, Taylor Howard and Daisy Daniel going a little bit small. Piera gets the first there step. There you go. And that's all it took is Piera got the open look and put it up off the glass for her second field goal. You really want to convert every turnover into a basket. It's exactly what they did there. That's a great play. Turk again on the drive. Throws it in the corner for Tapia. They swing it around the horn. Turk open look for three. That's in and out. And Daniel able to track it down. Daniel has been an absolute force the last two games on both sides of the glass. It's a nice luxury, isn't it, to bring Someone like that off the bench with that height. Howard, another chance for three. This one won't go. This time the Vaqueros box out as Tapia gets it. 
Turk will bring it down the right side. Picked up at the three-point line by Taylor Howard. Comes around a screen. Howard staying with her. We're inside of two minutes in this quick-moving first quarter. Lopes up by three. Here's Sampson looking for room. Daniel staying with her. Sampson can't get a shot off. Give it to Mosley. Mosley drive on Balagay. Force up the shot. Initiate the contact. But the foul is going to be called on Carla Balagay, and that's two quickies on the backup center. There you see Pieta taking that ball the hole. You see she recognized there was no help on the baseline, so she just went. There's nobody there. Well, they were it's trying to switch. Yeah, they were trying to switch, and Dowell was right there, and all of a sudden, Pierre was right behind her and gone. It's a great read. So here is Mosley to the line. First free throws of the afternoon for either side. And the first free throw for Mosley. The native of Alameda, Texas, is good. Quick breather for A.J. Cephas, and Balagay will have to take those two personals to the Lopes bench. Minute 46 left to go here in the fast-moving first quarter. Mosley makes one, misses one, and the rebound down to Deja Daniel. Daniel taking a look at her head coach before she heads to the opposite side of the floor. Pieta running the show, comes to the right side, hands off for Howard. Here's the Kula outside the arc. They haven't been able to get her open looks yet, and as she tried to hook it inside for Daniel, Daniel was turning the other way before she got the basketball. That was the eternal. That was a nice pass. It was a good pass. It was the right pass to make, too, because she was there. Get it down to your bigs and let them go to work. And they are doing exactly what we talked about in the keys of the game. They want to try and use that size, and they're working it inside to Miller, to Cephas, and to Daniel. Here's Graham around the street, covered by Daniel on the switch. Now she's double teamed on the baseline. Has to get rid of it. Dangerous pass, and somehow goes to Dowell. She'll drive inside, put it up off the glass, and get it to go. First field goal for Jamaica Dowell. And now we're tied again. Already the fourth time in this first quarter. We're knotted up with exactly a minute left to go. Pressure by Dowell outside, but that gives Piera the chance to drive, and she takes advantage of it. She's hit hard as she goes up in the shot. Shot didn't go, but free throw time for the native of Barcelona, Spain. Yeah, it's good to see her taking that ball to the hole. It's two or three times she's done that. She scored, and she's been able to pass off. That's good recognition. Northcutt had to come over to yeah. help, and Piera, the nice little double pump to get that contact. And a little frustrated with herself as she misses her second free throw. She'll get one more to try and break the tie as Taylor Caldwell comes back in for the final minute of the quarter. Pieta able to break the tie with the second free throw. And Graham speedily comes out of backcourt. Cephas back in the lineup making sure that she slows up to help Pieta. Nicole Powell directing traffic defensively for her team as the play happens in front of her. Graham throws it out front for Chrissy Sampson. Sampson drives on Seaford. Stop with the back of the basket. Back row pass. Dowell able to get it. Throws to Northcutt. Goes up and Northcutt is four for four. She's had a heck of a game underneath. And that was good ball movement. So now for only the second time in the game, the Lopes trailing. And about a half second difference between the shot clock and the game clock is Caldwell using time and slapping that hand away from Dowell. Clock at 10. Caldwell backing up. Now wants somebody to set a screen. It's Daniels to go away from it. Down to four, three. Stutter step. Caldwell had the drive and then lost it in the air. And the Vaqueros won't get a shot off before the end of the first quarter. Nip and tuck battle as we expected. Ten minutes down. And we're ready for the second quarter. Here's your score. UT, Rio Grande Valley 15, GCU 14. Keep it here for more action on GCU TV. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a center. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, 
Pacific Championship Golf Course and Coffee Shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com. Jamal Tom Kuyper back here for this Saturday afternoon at GCU Arena. Nip and tuck battle with UTRGV on top by one. But this is part of a home doubleheader of GCU athletic events here on the GCU campus. After this game, we will move the scene to Antelope Gym across campus as the GCU men's volleyball team, winners of a big cup from behind victory last night in their home opener against Benedict Team, will take on the spirit of Iowa University. Again, that's a be here in person but if not you can join us right here on gcu tv lopes will start off the second quarter with the basketball trailing by a single point taylor howard taylor caldwell lada pieta aj cephas and deja daniel that's the five on the floor for nicole powell here's caldwell on the drive trying to get her first shot that one won't go but on the rebound scramble it's knocked out of bounds and as we take a look at the first quarter stats, Tom Kuyper, we talked about the interior passing. It's been crisp, and as a result, both teams are shooting the lights out. Yeah, they really are. UTRGV shooting 53, almost 54 percent. The Lopes 60 percent. Daniel that's good misses. shooting. Yeah, that's great shooting. Daniel couldn't get the shot, but the offensive board gives him another try. Here's Pieta again looking for the drive. Nice lob for Cephas. Open look. Six footers good, and Cephas gets into the scoring battle to give the Lopes the lead back. And again, it all started by that penetration into the paint, drawing the defense over. Amara Graham out front, joined by Madison Northcutt, Cynthia Sampson, Quinn Huggins, and Jamika Dow, the five on the floor that started the game for Lane Lord, the UTRVG head coach, and Huggins with a turnover, just took her eyes off the ball. We've seen that from both teams a couple of times. Yeah, unforced turnovers, that's what drives coaches nuts. It's and okay if, if someone hits that out of your hand, or but it, it's just unforced. That hurts. And you can see Lord chopping on that gum a little bit more in front of the huge RGB bench after that turnover. Here's Howard out front. Graham pestering her. The end of a reset with 14 on the low shot clock. Comes around to Daniel Street, double team momentarily. Out front, Cephas inside, low block. Daniel, one bounce, go to the hoop. Can't get it to go. Daniel's had a couple of good open looks, just has not been able to find the range. Graham cut off the free throw line as the Zaccaro's try to get the lead back. Neither team is led by more than four. Graham, drive in, fake, shoot, shot, high off the glass and gets it. He banged into Cephas, but no harm, no foul. And she gives UCRGV the lead back. Yeah, that can't happen. The Lopes really have to take control of that paint in there. You can't let the littler people come in and score. You just got to stop it. Nearly two minutes gone by in the second quarter. Caldwell, down to the key for Pieta. Pieta came down on that tender ankle. Winched a little bit, but still goes in. Can't get the shot to go. Daniel with the follow. That one still won't go. And Deja has got to be one frustrated individual. And add insult to injury, she's called for the loose ball foul. Well, there you see the frustration, too. She missed that easy put back. And so she reaches over and makes a foul defensively. You see that often. You just got to got to have that state of mind. You can't do that. You make a mistake, let it go. Get back on defense. But give Daniel credit. She's got four rebounds in only four minutes. So she is doing her part as she heads to the bench. And Sharon Miller got a nice breather on the low bench. She's back in the middle for TCU. Huggins give it to North Cut at the high post. She works in on Miller. Looking, looking, forces up the shot. There's her first miss. And it was Miller's defense that did it as Seif is able to get the long rebound. Miller holding her ground. And GCU. Trying to get off and running in the second quarter. Miller, beautiful fake with the head. Puts it up and in. Sharon Miller with her eight points. Now just keep her in the game because she dominates when she's in there. That was a great move. You see the way that she was begging for the ball, too? She really wanted it. Sees the disadvantage with Northcutt. So far, she's taken advantage of it. Three minutes gone by second quarter. Lopes swing back out on top by a slim point. Milking the clock is Graham out front as they spread the floor. Lee Bellina from 14, that's off the mark. And it's Pieta who is covering Graham, getting the rebound. Brings it quickly down the left side. Caldwell cut off on the baseline, brings it back out front. Pieta will slow it up and wants to direct traffic. Here's Seifert, starting to drive, keeps coming. Lose the ball, get it back, put it up, won't go. 
Tip for the rebound. Cephas tips it to herself and takes care of the rest. AJ Cephas trying to come to life in the second quarter. And there's that height advantage. Just tip it to yourself. Reach high and get it. Cephas, the transfer from the University of Nevada, who has battled a concussion throughout most of the early part of the season, but has really started to look like herself the last three games. Here's Sampson on the drive. Cephas knocked it away. Sampson gets it back. Give it to Graham with eight on the shot clock. Amara moving across the lane. The other stand with her shot clock at four. She'll fire up a three and get it, and that was all she could do to beat that 30-second shot clock. Well, that's too bad. Great defense and then give up a three like that. Ties it up. Already the fifth time we've been knotted up. The head in the front court. Off from Miller. Miller trying to face the hoop. Waits for Caldwell to come get a Taylor will drive in. Puts up an off-balance shot. Go. Good defense by Northcutt. She gets the rebound. Outlet it for Graham. Lopes are back defensively, so Graham will have to slow it up. Off to Jamaica Dow. Dow full head of steam across the lane. Here's Huggins. Huggins has only one field goal so far. Into the corner. Graham trying for a second straight three. Can't get it. And Miller swoops in to get the board. Deanna looking up court, but sees nothing but orange jerseys. So she'll slow it down as we near the midpoint of the second quarter. Deanna starts left, goes right. Covered by Graham and a split. Miller moves inside. They try to get it to her. And they do. Beautiful pass. Cephas on the money for Miller, who's already in double figures with 10 points. And Lane Lord wants to talk about it. 5 4 left to go before the halftime. And GCU swings out on top. Sharon Miller, a force inside. It's the Lopes 22, but Carroll's 20 right here on GCU TV. I'm Brittany, and this is our Ask GC. Hi, I'm Brittany Holwin, and you should watch Ask GCU. Where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, pro in a, all right. I'm a professional answer. <laughs> Tweet hashtag Ask GCU to get your question featured. Sharon here. She sets a pick. Now watch what happens. There's a switch. She recognizes it. She keeps her defender on her left hip, seals her, gets that ball, puts it up nice and strong. Five for five right now. She's with four rebounds. But the best part of that, having someone that understands the game well enough and can recognize there was a switch up yes. on top. Yeah. So she had a, a mismatch underneath. She sealed her with her left arm and her left hip. That ball came, so it's recognition also from the passer. So great play, man. But you can have someone that can play with uh, that kind of physical underneath and to be so smart with that basketball IQ. She, she just does such a great job underneath. And Cephas didn't really have to make her work for it because sometimes those lob passes can be off, uh, sometimes off the mark. That was right on the money, and that has been what Cephas has done throughout this entire homestand. Into the ball game. Cheyenne Trammell now running the point. Fumbles it out front. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Trammell comes to the left side with the dribble. Out front straight away. Three-pointer put up and in by Gwen Huggins. She had her first open look from outside the arc and was able to get it, although Huggins didn't think she made it. She was running inside for the offensive board. Lopes now trailed by a point. Miller now playing the high and the high-low. Give it in the corner for Caldwell. Caldwell looking for Daylight. They've done a good job of blanketing her here in this first half. Howard in the corner brings it out front. Can't get an open look. Give it to Akula, who fires a three! And finally, they're able to get Akula off and running for three-point range. Boy, she was deep, too. She was way back in the corner with a hand in front of her. That was nice. Already the seventh lead change we've had. And the Lopes come the other way after the miss. 
Caldwell down the right side. Picked up by Megan Johnson, who's back in the ball game for Wayne Lord's Vaqueros. Nicole Powell streaming for them to move. They swing it around the horn right side. Here's Howard around the secret screen. 15 footer too hard. And nothing but orange jerseys underneath for the defensive board that time. Trample comes down. Cheyenne, the native of Shawnee, Oklahoma, five foot seven Richard Jr. Here's Turk back in. She'll drive on the stutter step. Gets up in the air with nowhere to go. It's saved by Mosley. Give it to Trample, who has an open look, but the three pointer won't go. The Lopes did their job sagging defensively, but they almost got burned by the open look from, th from the three point line. So they kind of dodged the ball right there. She was wide open, maybe too open. Akula outside the arc, covered by Turk. Give it to Caldwell. Caldwell wants Howard to go inside. Sets a screen. Miller can't spring free. They'll reset it with eight on the shot clock. Around the Cephas screen. Stop. She'll back up and fire a 15-footer. Looked good, but it went around and came back out. Tough break. Still a two-point low edge. Inside of three minutes left to go before the half. Driving is Johnson. She'll stop. Fake. Had an open look, but passed it up. Out front for Trample. Good defense that time by Taylor Howard on the interior. Trample now double team on the trap. Huggins had it, lost it, brings it out. Eight on the shot clock. And that one blocked beautifully by A.J. Cephas on the three-pointer. And in frustration, Huggins went for the steal, got part of the arm, and Cephas just flung her arm away. There's that height advantage of the long arms by Cephas. She, she, she stayed close enough. So she didn't foul, she wouldn't let her get around her, but then when that ball went up with those long arms, she was able to reach out and get the ball. What a great defensive play. It was a good stance. She knew exactly how far she needed to be. Great court awareness. She also knew that the time is running down on the shot clock. So Lane Lord continues to go deep into his bench. Nichelle Hyman checks in, the native of Clovis, New Mexico. And Lada Pieta again running the point. Kennedy Shorts has made her first appearance in the low lineup out front. Pass inside. There's Miller. Guess what? She'll put it up. She'll put it in. And Miller continuing to be perfect from the field. Yeah, she's doing a perfect job of sealing her defender. That's why they get her the ball. Johnson with the curl. Puts it up. Fall away jumper won't go. Rebound tipped to the side by Mosley. And the Vaqueros will get another chance at the two-minute mark. This equals the largest lead for either team so far. Johnson covered by Caldwell around a Mosley screen, looking for room, stopped the free throw line. Open look, three-pointer put up and in and out that time by Hyman, but they'll get another try and a third time this time down the floor. Graham looking back at her head, goes Lane Lauren to get the play. Johnson, high post. Shimmy move, Caldwell stays with her. Bank shot is good. They made Johnson work for it, but she earned it with her first field goal. That was a nice move. She picked up the ball and jab stepped and had everybody fall forward and spun back and put it up. You know, Johnson would love to have a big game against the Lopes because when this team, when these two teams played last February here, it came down to a one point game and it was an offensive foul by Johnson with two seconds to go that sealed the Lopes win. Pieta in the corner for three! Laura Pieta with a big first half, eight points, and it's a five point GCU edge. And the Lopes looking comfortable from behind the arc, Tom. Well, they love that corner too. That's two times in that same spot in the last minute and a half or so. Sampson with Johnson inside of a minute. Sampson alone from 15. Got it. You don't give the former Arizona Western College and South Mountain alone that kind of room. She'll burn you and she did. Well, the Lopes made a mistake. They double teamed and they, they didn't switch and no one got off the ball back to the pass. Lopes with about four seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock can't get the last shot. But they'll take as much time down as they can as Nicole Powell directing traffic and saying, let's spread the floor. Shot clock at eight. She had a double team. Here's Caldwell. Back out for Lauda. Straight away for three off the mark. Johnson with six seconds gets the rebound. Off for Graham. Graham with three. She'll fire a long three to beat the buzzer, and it's short. And that's the way the first 20 minutes come to a close. As the Lopes lead the majority of the way, but still dip and tuck. The largest lead for either team, five. And it'll be a three-point edge that the purple of GCU will take in 
to the first half locker room. Paul Carno, our GCU insider, will bring you his top five GCU sports moments from 2018 on the other side of this break as we have reached halftime at GCU Arena. It's your GCU Lopes 30, UTRGV Vaqueros 27 right here on GCU TV. Thunder in the heart of Phoenix. GCULopes.com. Hi, I'm GCU insider Paul Coro. It's been a breakthrough year in Lopes Athletics. GCU took it to another level in 2018 many times, but here are our top five moments of the year. On March 9th, the men's basketball team made its first entry into the WAC basketball tournament in Las Vegas and earned a spot in the championship game when it beat Utah Valley 75-60 in the semifinals. The defense was so good that head coach Dan Marley had a little extra pop in his step when he jumped with the Havocs during the postgame celebration. On April 18th, there was more jumping jubilation when the WAC Women's Golf Championship came down to the final stroke on the final hole in Phoenix. GCU freshman Siri Pachana won the individual conference tournament title, but also clinched the team championship and an NCAA regional spot when she sank her putt on 18 and got showered with affection by her teammates and head coach Lauren Jacek. On May 18th, the baseball team did it again when Jake Repovich recorded his 20th career win at Seattle. For the second consecutive season, GCU won every conference series and claimed the regular season WAC title under head coach Andy Stankiewicz. A week later in May, Tom Flood's track and field team that swept WAC men's and women's indoor and outdoor team titles had a historic day at the NCAA West preliminaries. Pole vaulter Scott Marshall, long jumper Marcus Flanagan, and javelin thrower Jesse Newman all qualified for the NCAA championships. Newman went on to finish ninth in the nation to be put on the All-America second team. And the capper came on November 11th when the men's soccer team went on an incredible late season run that gave Shellis Hyman the fifth most coaching wins in NCAA men's soccer history and put the Lopes in the NCAA tournament. GCU shut out every WAC tournament opponent during the tournament, including a 1-0 championship victory against San Jose State in Seattle to head to NCAAs. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit
you wanted a close game, well, you certainly got your wish. Five ties and eight lead changes in the first 20 minutes. Lopes have led most of the way, but they have still gotten a strong challenge from the Vaqueros, and it's a three-point game at halftime. Well, of course, there was celebration of plenty after Thursday night's game here at GCU Arena as the Lopes women were able to hold off a lot of charges from New Mexico State and beat the four-time defending WAC regular season champions 54-51. But going on in Las Cruces while we were playing here was the rematch of last year's WAC championship game. And what a barn burner it was. Let's take a look back at Thursday night from Las Cruces. Dan Barley's Lopes men's basketball team against the New Mexico State Aggies. <laughs> tonight and you can catch that game starting at 6 p.m. live on ESPN plus and you can also catch it on the radio at 1580 a.m. and 99.3 FM the fanatic with the radio voice of the Lopes Michael Potter we've got the first half highlights on the other side of this break from GC Arena Lopes by three you use the latest technology to treat patients but your care and compassion is timeless and as an RN, you delight in sharing it. But there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere. So you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult, but Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. 
By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. 20 down, 20 to go here at this Saturday afternoon special to wrap up the inaugural homestand for your GCU Lopes women's basketball team. And it's a 30 to 27 Lopes edge so far. Jim Al, Tom Kuyper, happy you're with us. And you know what? The great thing that Nicole Powell, the Lopes head coach, has to love, Tom, is that it's been a total team concept defensively, but it's also been offensively because you had the great combination of Taylor Caldwell and A.J. Cephas on Thursday night. Here in this first half, it's the power punch of Miller and Pieta. Yeah, well, you've got two girls, one on the outside, one on the inside, working together. When you get that kind of dynamics, it really works well. That gave them that lead. As we look at it, it was Cephas finding Miller early, who spent most of the game Thursday in foul trouble. They wanted to get her going, and they certainly did that. Yeah, six, six for six from the field, 12 points, five rebounds. She's on her way to a double-double. Really strong performance underneath. And because they had to sag on Miller defensively, that left some lanes open for Lada Pierre, and she took advantage. Well, she's being smart, too. She's finding gaps. She's finding openings, reading the defense. and finding places where she get a nice high percentage look and yeah she's done a great job uh, with eight points in that first half and when you're able to get those high percentage shots inside that high percentage is good gonna be what results and they have shot the ball well the low shooting 48 percent from the field and even though utrgb is shooting well as well they're having to work a little harder i think for their shots than gcu is yeah and when you look at, at the ball movement look at grand canyon 10 assists and so that just shouts out that they're working together reading together finding the open gaps and and get the people that we talked about taking care of the middle and 18 to 13 on the rebound so TCU doing a great job in the paint and you got to give some credit not just to, to Sharon Miller and AJ Cephas but you also got to look at Deja Daniel because Daniel only played seven minutes but she had four big rebounds and she really made a difference in the clogging the lane defensively when the Vaqueros were trying to get off and running well, again, it's a nice advantage to have someone like Daniel coming off the bench. Second half upcoming. Hope you'll stick around with us from GCU Arena. It's the Lopes 30, University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley 27. Second half on the way right here on GCU TV. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin or whether you're rich poor or in the middle no matter what you play if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports we'll provide the opportunity you use the latest technology to treat patients but your care and compassion is timeless and as an RN you delight in sharing it but there's always room to grow. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Healthcare has made significant advancements and GCU teaches you how to prepare for the future. By applying that knowledge, you're able to stay up to date with the latest medical technologies. And since GCU's nursing programs are online, you can access your program from anywhere. So you're always there for those most important. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back at GC Arena, Rio Grande Valley has led four times, but never by more than two. The Lopes' largest lead, five, and the Vaqueros, they got, they went down inside early and often, and it was Madison Northcutt producing Tom Guy. Yeah, I was really impressed by Madison. She didn't back off. 
and she doesn't have that size, didn't have the length, but boy, she took it to him underneath and ended up with eight points in that first half. And I was really impressed by her aggressive play underneath. We had spoken with head coach Lane Lord before the game about how he was worried about the size and, and what he was going to do with it. You could tell he was trying to poke holes defensively, but the good news for the Lopes and for Nicole Powell was all of her eight points came in that first quarter. She only got one shot attempt in the second quarter, so they had done a good job of switching up. The Carols will start off the second half of the basketball. They trail 30 to 27. Here's North Cup with the ball out front. Given for Sampson, open list from three, but that's off the mark, and she knew it. She raced inside, but couldn't get to the rebound. Taylor Caldwell comes up with it. Same five that started the game for Nicole Powell. Lauda Pieta, Kavita Akula, Taylor Caldwell, A.J. Cephas, and Sharon Miller. Double screen set up for Pieta, who takes the dribble to the left side. Covered by Amara Graham. Cephas, again in for Miller. They want to get her going, just like they did in the first half. And what do you know, she's human. Pressure by Northcutt, and Miller misses her first shot of the day. Graham brings it up quickly. Now, Turk getting the start for this second half. Normally, she has been the starting shooting guard. Came off the bench in the first half and came up with two points. Inside, Johnson swinging to the hoop. Shot won't go. Good defense that time. Caldwell held her ground. Taylor comes up into the forecourt. Here's Pieta. Pieta wanted to move quickly, but Graham anticipated well to cut her off. They go to the right side for Caldwell. Caldwell's missed all three of her field goals so far. They'd love to get her moving offensively in this second half. He had a reset with nine on the shot clock. Neither team has scored in this first minute, 15. Akula, open look for three. Bounces off the front of the iron. Not good. Sampson with a rebound. Graham comes down the left side. Lopes gets set defensively. Throws it out for Sampson. Sampson seeing daylight, but Cephas cuts her off. Out front, here's Adil Turk. Turk, the native of Istanbul, Turkey. Five foot seven and one of two redshirt seniors on this team. And on the drive, a whistle and a foul. That one called on Akula. That is her first of the day. There you see Miller with her 12 points. She finally missed one, that opening shot in to start this third quarter. But, man, what a game. Again, she's on pace to get a double-double. Johnson inbounds right in front of her head coach, first-year head coach Lane Lord. Northcutt will turn around, fire a three. Looked good, but it was too hard. That's the first time that she's taken anything outside of the lane. Caldwell comes into the forecourt. Again, the low block pass. Miller got in there and got the low pressure on Northcutt, and Northcutt forced a foul. That's her second, and you can tell that was a design play as Miller set up right underneath the hoop. Well, they're clearing the paint for Miller, and that's why they're getting that into her. See, when it goes up high like that, everyone's got to come out to the top, and so that left Miller wide open. And nice, strong move underneath. She knew she wasn't going to get the, the shot off as she makes that first free throw. But she knew she was going to get fouled. Well, and Miller, one of only two seniors on this team, has really worked to learn how to get that hip move and how, the, and how she's able to use her elbows cleanly to get that free space. And Miller capitalizing on both free throws, and it's back to a five-point edge for GCU. Two minutes into this second half, it equals their biggest. Turk trying to play keep away from Akula, has to stop the dribble, and Akula right on her. Northcutt driving on Miller. She'll force up the shot that won't go. Good defense by Sheeran, but if she brings down the rebound, it's knocked out of her hands. Sampson with another try. Northcutt puts it up, and a count of it goes, and it falls through. First scoring for Northcutt since the first quarter, but she'll have the chance for the three-point play. But she just doesn't back down, does she? And she works hard underneath. There's that. See how she knocks the ball away first. Then she sets herself up, seals her defender. Boy, that's some hard work for working underneath like that. Lane Lord talked about her scrappiness to us before the game. Northcutt misses the rebound, but an or misses the shot on the three-point play attempt. But again, UTRGB crashing the offensive glass and getting another try. Lob in Northcutt. This time can't get it to go. Follows her own shot and gets it. And Northcutt really working hard. Again, Lane Lord talked about her scrappiness, and she's showing it right there. Boy, absolutely. She is keeping UTRGV in this game. I'm telling you, she is really playing a, so a solid game. But now a concern. That could have been on Northcutt instead. It's called on Megan Johnson. That's a first foul. foul. And now wholesale changes as Lane Lord is going to platoon. Michaela Mosley, Quinn Huggins, Michelle Hyman. 
Cheyenne Tramble and Jamika Dow all come in for a new five for the team wearing orange. Lob over the top, and this time Mosley anticipates, got in front of Miller and made the steal. It was a good idea. It was a bad pass. It just wasn't high enough. Miller had her sealed right. Huggins trying to work one on one, almost traveled. Nicole Powell can't believe they didn't call it. Here's Trample, sees daylight, tried to pass it inside, and Miller kicked it to make sure that Mosley didn't have a chance for a lay in. That'll reset the shot clock to 15. And Deja Daniels is going to get the warm ups off. She will check in, and Miller will get a breather. Miller with a nice hand as she heads to the Lopes bench. Trample has to throw it way out front for Dowell. Dowell wanted to drive, but good weak side help by Cephas. Trample off for Huggins, backs up one of the three, but Cephas with a hand in her face gives it to the cutting. Michelle Hyman, she'll put it up off the glass and in. And suddenly, just like that, it's a 6 0 run, and the first lead of the second half for UTRGV. The Wolves got to get some energy out here. They have become very sluggish. Nice pass to the cutting seat as she was double teamed as she went up for the shot. Knocked it out of her hands was Hyman, but underneath the push by Quinn Huggins will send A.J. Cephas to the line for the first time on the afternoon. Already three team fouls in the first three minutes plus on Rio Grande Valley. Cephas puts up the first one and gets it. And that brings us our sixth tie as Taylor Howard checks in. AJ trying to give the Lopes the lead back and does. Cephas now with six points and it's a 34-33 Lopes edge. Huggins, not going to work on Cephas, but AJ's been up to the challenge so far. Bramble trying to spin on Pieta, allowed to stay right with her. Out front here's Hyman. Hyman can't get any room either. Shot clock and it doesn't as Mosley comes out to get the ball. Huggins comes around, the former Mason Community College star puts up up from three one go. Cephas tips the ball, but there was nobody there, and as Caldwell tried to save it, she stepped on the out of bounds line. So right now, UTRGV getting a lot of second shots. Oh boy. Well, it looks like her foot was on the good side of the line yeah. when she saved it. Wow. Okay. No luck that time for the Lopes. Driving inside, Huggins throws up the shot, won't go, but she's bumped and fouled as she put the shot up. And the fouls, which were not a factor on either side in the first half, starting to mount up here in the third quarter. That's the third team foul of the quarter for the Lopes, and it's called on Taylor Howard. So Huggins heading to that free throw line. First time she's been there this afternoon, and she drains the first one to tie it up at 34. To try and give us our 10th lead change, Huggins can't do it, and this time it's Cephas all alone for the defensive board. As you mentioned, the intensity level has been owned by UTRGV here in this first four and a half minutes. And the Lopes need to do something about it. Well, it looks like they're just kind of staying on the exterior. There you finally get somebody coming inside, but, but you got to be aggressive and go. Well, and this is around the time Thursday night where Caldwell started slashing to the hoop, really opening holes in the Aggie defense. She draws the foul on Dowell there. One more, and GCU will be in the bonus. Non-shooting foul this time. Here's Cephas, had an open look, passed it up into Daniel. One bounce, cut off, can't do anything with it. So they'll reset it with the freshman point guard, Lana Piena. Around to Daniel Street, keeps on coming, goes to the hook one go, but she was hooked and fouled. It was a late whistle. Hyman didn't like the call. And that's why, because she's charged with her first personal foul, and that puts UTRGV over the team foul limit. Well, I like it, and I like it when they penetrate and get the ball to the basket like this. Something good's going to happen when you do that. You either get fouled, and if you do, then you get to go to the line, and you get someone to foul, you cause problems on the, the defensive end in terms of foul trouble. And, and you do, it just works. If you penetrate and they come in defensively, 
then you can kick it out to some of your teammates out in an open window someplace. So it's all about getting the ball into the paint. Unfortunately, the looks were not back defensively there. Open look. Hyman couldn't get it to go. Mosley followed, couldn't that get to go. Lane Lauren thought there should have been a foul. It goes out of bounds, and the Lopes will get it. And Lord saying that Mosley should be going to the line. Lopes with a lineup of Taylor Caldwell, Taylor Howard, Deja Daniel, Carla Balagay, and Lada Pieta. And Nicole Powell wants to talk about it. 5.03 left to go in quarter number three. And it's the Lopes hanging on. GCU 36, UTRGV 34. Keep it here for more action on GCU TV. State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. GCULopes.com. Defensive struggle here in this second half. So far, five minutes down in the third quarter. And the Lopes have only gotten Tom Kuyper two shot attempts up. They're luckily seven for seven from the free throw line. That's why they still have the lead. Well, yeah, that's where they're getting their points. Yeah, they're not getting anything from the field. So they got to figure out. They got to go back down underneath. They got to penetrate. They got to get it into their bigs. Let Miller go to work. Let Seekers go to work. Let Daniel go to work. They've also got to make sure that the Vaqueros stay off the glass. The Vaqueros have 11 shot attempts here in this first five minutes, and mainly it's because they're getting two or three attempts each time down the floor. Then the other side of that with the Lopes, you just got to make sure you're not on the perimeter all the time. So Cephas now trying to break this press. Lane Lord said he was going to try and use this a couple of times. This is the first time he's really avoided, and it works to perfection as Caldwell loses it out of bounds. The Carols are going to get it in the front court. Well, Caldwell caught herself in the corner down there on the sideline. That, you just can't be there against the press. Now Caldwell trying to get it back, stepped in the passing lane, knocked it out of bounds. And now immediate timeout with exactly five minutes left to go, and both teams are going to have some discussions as if UTRGV is going to continue to try and get this defensive pressure working, the Lopes have got to try and match that intensity. They haven't been able to do it in the first five minutes as we take a look at what's on tap for the Lopes. After today, the, the homestand is over, and they will head east. They'll take on Chicago State Thursday night before heading to the state of Missouri for UM Kansas City. And right now, UMKC tied atop the wax standings before they come home two weeks from today. The Lopes will host Cal Baptist in a 2 p.m. tip-off right here at GCU Arena. We hope you'll be a part of that as that'll start a two-game homestand over two weeks. They'll take on CSUB. And, of course, CSUB is the team that eliminated them from the WAC tournament last year, so you know they've got revenge as well. Now, that's not the only home games going on here. In fact, as soon as we are done today, right here at GCU Arena, we'll move it to the other gymnasium here on the GCU campus, that being Antelope Gym. As the men's volleyball team fresh off a huge come-from-behind five-set victory last night against Benedictine, will try to make it two in a row and finish out a successful weekend against the Spirit of Ottawa University out of surprise. Again, that will be a 4 p.m. first serve, and we hope they'll pack it like they did last night. 1,400 fans packing the gym at Antelope Gym last night and got some great volleyball, as a matter of fact. GCU not only came from two sets or from two sets to one down, they had to go extras and win it in 5, 17, 15 to get that win over the Red Hawks. So it should be a good one. You still got time to get out here and join them. But if not, stick around. We've got it right here on GCU TV. So Cephas, Miller, Pieta, Howard, and Caldwell. That's the vibe on the floor that Nicole Powell will send out defensively. 
And Madison Northcutt will get the inbounds pass out front for the Vaqueros. Drive inside by Church, scoop shot, that one won't go. Caldwell held her ground, and Miller able to win the pinball battle for the defensive board. Vieta holds, holds up one thumb to single out the play as she crosses the midcourt line. Miller looking for somebody to pass it to, finally gets it to Caldwell. Caldwell still has been shut out of the scoring column this afternoon after that 15-point performance against the Aggies Thursday night. Shot clock at six. Vieta starts to move. Double team has it knocked away, and it's stolen on the side by Johnson. She comes down two on two, hand off to Turk, put it up, put it in, and the transition for one of the few times this afternoon works as UTRGV ties it at 36. Yeah, there again, the Lopes did everything on the outside. They did not touch that purple in there. Vieta double team, good weak side help by Johnson. Caldwell looking for room, gets it for Miller. Miller there goes go. in, and Northcutt, that was all she could do. She grabbed at the ball, but she got the body, and Northcutt arguing with official Charles Gonzalez, who makes the call, and that is three on the UTRGV starting center, and that will send Miller to the line. It's one of the things we talked about, the Lopes dominating in the middle, but UTRGV has more points inside than the Lopes do, so it, you got to figure out the, a, a way to get in there, either penetrate by dribbling or penetrate by passing in there. Miller at the line for the second time in this quarter. She leads the way in scoring with 15. Remember, she got her career high of 21 in that three-overtime win seven days ago in Seattle. That one rimmed around and came out. That's the Lopes first miss from the line in this third quarter. They're eight out of nine. So the Vaqueros will have it back, and this time it's the Lopes' turn to apply full court defensive pressure. Turk able to spin away from it, and the Lopes back out. Turk, the leading scorer on this team, but coming off the bench this afternoon as she tried to put the brakes on. She's held and fouled, and that'll be personal foul number two on Taylor Caldwell. That's team foul number four on the GCU, so the last non-shooting foul of the quarter for either team comes with 3.45 left. Turk on the drive, now double team. That leaves Sampson alone out front. Three-pointers too hard, and Miller with good inside position pulls down her seventh rebound. Yeah, when you watch her rebound, she really works position. She doesn't jump high, she just gets in the right position. She's got a size advantage on Northcutt. She's been using it well, especially on the offensive side. In the corner, Howard alone, three-pointer off the side of the glass, not good. Graham with a rebound. She wants to run. Looks back defensively, but Johnson's in there and almost too far underneath the basket. Still able to muscle it up and in, Megan Johnson. And just like that, UTRGV swings back out on top, 38-37. Miller down to the key. Off for Caldwell. Here's Howard. Pass. Beautiful. Inside for Miller. And that pat and that shot hung on the back of the iron forever and then falls off. Tough break. Graham will drive all the way in. And as she goes up for the shot, she's hacked and fouled. That will put GCU over the team foul limit. And UTRGV starting to work the transition. That was a nice fast break. That's what's keeping him in, in the game. They're playing great defense, getting that ball and turning that into offense. Foul is on Cephas. That's her first. And Graham to the line for the first time in the afternoon. This team, as a team, shoots 66% from the free throw line. Lopes have done a pretty good job of keeping them off the line this afternoon. They're only three out of six. And trying to extend this lead to three, which she can't do, and the rebound tipped out of bounds, and Huggins was able to slap it off to Miller. So once again, the Vaqueros will get a second opportunity, this time down the floor. Nicole Powell, seeing that the interior needs some Punch will get Deja Daniel in there, and Miller will check out. Still just under three minutes left to go third quarter. Slapped away from Hyman. Sifa staying with her. She comes out on the arc. Up down for Tapia. They get it inside, and Dowell on the drive. 
Can't get the shot to go. But free throw time again coming for the Vaqueros. That foul on Deja Daniel off the bench. Yeah, look at this nice backdoor cut. Nice read. Your defender's overplaying you on that wing. And you feel like she's lunging. You just make that head fake, that hand fake, and go back door. Well, the Lopes were very susceptible to that backdoor pass against the Aggies of New Mexico State. Did a good job in the second half of really compensating for that. They haven't really had to worry about it in this ball game until now. It's a three-point game as Powell makes one of two free throws. And they're able to beat the press. And then as they get it into the front court, the pass knocked away by Michaela Mosley. And the Lopes struggling with that intensity of UTRGV right now. Miller comes back in. Daniel only got to play a couple of offensive plays before she checks out. 22 on the shot clock, 225 left to go in corner number three. And very quietly, the Vaqueros have taken a three-point lead as that one had too much on it. Miller was leaning the other way, and it goes off her hands out of bounds. Another GCU turnover. And that was not a good entry pass by Taylor Howard. You got to put that ball up a little bit. She kind of shot it in there like a rocket, put it up in the air, and let Miller seal her defender and get it. We're nearing the two minute mark of the quarter, and the Lopes are still looking for their first made field goal. 40 to 37. This is the largest lead for the Vaqueros on the afternoon. Here's Huggins. Off open look. Hyman from three. Got it. Michelle Hyman off the bench. Both field goals here in this third quarter. She's got five points. And Nicole Powell wants a 30-second timeout with a frustrated look on her face as she has seen a three-point halftime lead become a six-point deficit. This is the largest lead for UTRGV. And Huggins finding the open person. That was Hyman. But has a nice stroke too. Up in the air, nice backspin. See when you take your man inside and pull the defender with you, you kick it back out, and it was a wide open shot. It was very nice, really well run. So Lane Lord drawing up a couple of plays and saying, stay with this intensity at the UTRGV huddle. Meanwhile, Nicole Powell exhorting her charges, wearing purple. You've got to start matching up. It's all about effort. The Lopes are just not giving the effort. They need that same effort that they had Thursday night. Get the ball into the paint. Doesn't matter if you dribble it into the paint, pass it into paint. You've got to be more aggressive. And she's going to get Kennedy Shorts in for only the second time this afternoon. The six foot one freshman from Long Beach, hoping to give him a spark as she moves inside. Cephas had trouble getting it to Caldwell, and you can see just how sticky this defense is. Cephas moving inside, starting left, spinning right, and a three-second lane violation. And you can credit that all the way to Quinn Huggins. She just wouldn't give Cephas any room. Yeah, that's too bad. That was a quick three, I think, but stay with that. Keep dumping it down. Here's Tapia playing point guard right now. Here's the backdoor pass. Hyman with a head fake. Gives it cross court. Dowell, three-pointer, no. Long rebound comes out front. And now Mosley is down and hurt. And an official's timeout. As it looked like she might have turned an ankle. So the training staff comes out for UTRGV. And play stops with 82 seconds left to go in the third. She's in a lot of pain right there. Looks like she may have come down on her shoulder. Let's look at it. You can see she came down kind of awkwardly on that right arm. Looked like she got tripped up initially by her teammate Quinn Huggins and then got bumped to the side by Sharon Miller, and she's still in a lot of pain as she's bent over on the UTRGV bench. So Northcutt will have to come back in in the middle, and she's playing with three personal fouls. Not sure if she wrenched her back. And of course, don't want to speculate on that, but as Mosley gets tended to, the Carrolls will have it with a fresh shot clock as Huggins will drive. Throws it out front. There's Tapia. Pounded by Vienna and apparently too much. Wow. Sheroble will call the foul on Pieta. Both teams have been over the bonus for quite a while. A little bit of hand there. She went for the ball and she got all ball. But I think they said that 
They got Pia, and the Pieta got her too much for the body. So Tapia to the line for a pair. First free throws in and out. In this third quarter, after only firing two free throw attempts in the first 20 minutes, they have now gone to the line eight times, making nine. And it's a seven point edge. And they continue to extend their largest lead as Pieta. Running out of backcourt gets held and fouled by Tapia. So both teams will make the long trip down to the Lopes free throw line with a minute 14 left. Lopes still have not been able to convert a field goal in this second half. And that's been one of their problems over the course of the season is slow starts after halftime. And they've got another one here. They had no such problem Thursday night. They scored 17 points in the third quarter. And then went over the Aggies. First free throw by Pieta is good. Taylor Caldwell checks back into the Lopes lineup. Nicole Powell giving her some instructions. And Pieta, a perfect five for five from the line here in the third quarter. Out and out with 13 points. And it's a two possession game again. Sampson, dribble drive. Has to stop as Cephas flanking her. Throws it out front. Shorts gets a hand on it, not once but twice. And is able to knock it off of Turk out of bounds. Great play by Kennedy Shorts, who doesn't get a lot of playing time. But Nicole Powell hoping she can get some intensity to her charges, and she certainly did it right there. It's, that was a lot of energy. She dove out to the ball, got on it. Maybe that'll translate to others doing the same thing. And now inside, Cephas trying to get room, pushed off on Huggins, and there's an offensive foul to send it the other way. Already nine team fouls on the Lopes in this third quarter. Graham back in at the point, brings it up front. Here's the deal, Turk. Turk looking for room, scrambles in. Uh, bumping all the way with Caldwell, still gets the scoop shot up and in. The deal, Turk with her third field goal off the bench. Half a minute to go, still a seven point UTRGV edge. Miller straight away. That's an air ball, and it goes out of bounds. And Miller looking at her hands, and it looks like. Unless they can get the ball back, the GCU is going to go without a made field goal in this third quarter. So the shot clock is off. Game clock did not start. So now they'll stop it as Charles Gonzalez, the lead official of this three-person crew, along with Kimberly Hobbs and Cheryl Blue, will say let's put 21 seconds up. And Samson will inbound it in the backcourt. UTRGV, the former Texas Pan American. And they merged that in the Brownville campus a few years ago and made it to Rio Grande Valley. Johnson now almost threw it away, saved by Turk with three seconds. With two, she'll back away, fire a three. Oh, no. The buzzer will turn to the first to end the third quarter. Seven of her nine points coming in that stanza, and it's a ten point deficit all of a sudden for the Lopes. As they have to get some things turned around in that fourth quarter. We've got the fourth quarter upcoming. It's UTRGV 49, GCU 39, right here on GCU TV. That time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course, I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want a lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit GCU. Back at GCU Arena, Jim Howell along with Tom Kuyper as the Lopes close out the homestand, but that was a disastrous 
third quarter. I'm not sure which is the bigger concern for Lopes head coach Nicole Baltom, the fact that they didn't convert a field goal or the fact that they only got five field goal attempts. Well, yeah, both of them are a huge concern, but wow, where'd that come from? All of a sudden, the Lopes are down by 10. What happened? Gosh, no energy, no taking the ball to the hole, no helping on the defense. It has been a bugaboo for GCU all season long is coming out of that halftime locker room and having an ebb in intensity. They were outscored in that third quarter, 22-9. to nine. They have the ball to start the fourth quarter, and they've got some serious business to do. Pieta has been the main scoring there you go. and there you go, Pieta and Miller. Pieta drawing the defense and leaving Miller alone, that's her 17th point. Here's Sampson on the drive, and that one swatted away by Cephas. We've seen Sampson do that a lot here in the second half, and this time Cephas wasn't going to have any of it. Inbound, almost thrown away as Turk and Graham not on the same page. It's saved by Sampson. Just scoop it for Turk. Turk again looking for the drive. Double team, hook pass. North cut fumbles, gets it back. Graham alone on the perimeter and drains the three. This time, it was the sagging defense that burned GCU as they had all the bases covered for the drives, but they left Graham alone. Largest lead of the game for either team. And it's the visitors from Edinburgh, Texas, that have it at 52-41. Caldwell from 14 won't go, and she's still scoreless. Boxing out, the Vaqueros have the position. Miller went over the top, picked up the loose ball foul. The good news is that's only the yeah. first personal on the starting center, as Miller fouled out and was in foul trouble most of the night Thursday. One minute gone by. And Lane Lord going to go to the platoon system next time ball's dead, which happens now is away from the ball. Caldwell called for the personal foul. That is her third. It'll be a non-shooting foul. And Lane Lord's going to bring in five new charges. Quinn Huggins, Michaela Mosley, Michelle Hyman, Cheyenne Tremble, and Jamaica Dowell has worked very well in the third quarter for him, hoping for the same success here. And now Ben Laveris is going to make her first appearance in the Lopes lineup. Let's see if maybe she can get something going from three-point range. Long throw out front for Dower. Make that Hyman. She lobs in on the give and go for Mosley. Mosley lost her balance. And that will force the turnover. They had the right idea, just the lob was a little bit too hard for Mosley. And once again, the Vaqueros looking to press. Here's Pieta. Trying to dribble away from the double team and not cutting off that baseline was Hyman. She'll pick up the foul. That's her second. First team foul of the quarter on UTRGV. So Cephas will inbound in front of the Vaqueros bench. Pieta dribbles away from trouble, but they're still looking to trap. Goes to the... Left arc, dangerous pass. Vera gets, Varis gets it, drives inside and travels. Well, Varis had two different people running at her, and the freshman from Finland not able to avoid the turnover. And GCU still looking for some offensive flow. Yeah, they've got to get something going here. Down by 11 now with eight and a half minutes. Huggins straight away three. No. Miller tips it up in the air. Cephas goes down. Vienna comes down with it. They need a hoop here. See, there's no break there. There were more orange shirts back and in front of the ball than there were white. You can't have that be out, of, be out in front of the ball. Vienna trying to go to the drive that worked so well in the first half. Couldn't get the shot to go, but does draw the foul on Dowell. And Lada, who's been a force at the free throw line here in the second half, will go back there for a pair. First free throw is good. Lopes normally struggle from the free throw line, at least on the season, only 54%, but they have been on target during this homestand. They were 10 for 12 free throw shooting Thursday night against New Mexico State, and they've been even better than that this afternoon, and Pieta continues to be perfect. She's 7 for 7 in the second half, 8 for 9 for the game. Nine point UTRGVN. They continue to weave to look for holes in that interior. 
And there's a double team. Nice play by Miller, but as she went for the rebound, it's knocked out of her hands. Last touch by UTRGV. So good weak side help that time. Yeah, it's good team defense. That weak side's got to come over. Again, the pressure defense. Ferris sees daylight and comes down the left side. And they wanted a trap, and they did. Huggins came over from the weak side and kicked it out of bounds. Yeah, when you press like that on the full court, when they get past that uh, 10 second line, that press is not over. They keep going after you, keep looking for traps along that baseline and the and the sidelines. And I think the low side, once they got it past that time stripe, that it was over. Well, and that was exactly what Nicole Powell was saying to Kavita Akula before she sent her in. But you've got to help take care of the basketball. So Akula in there at the shooting guard spot. Here's Shorts. Short start to dribble drive. She loses the ball. Too many hands slapping at it. And the Vaqueros come up with the turnover again. Two and a half minutes gone by fourth quarter. When you talked about finding gaps to get to the, to the rim and penetrate. That's exactly it. That has to be a gap. That was a no gap there. Dribbling out front is Tramble. Tramble looking for room. Looking for somebody inside. Huggins finally comes out to get the ball with seven on the shot clock. Drives on Cephas, pushes off, gets away with it, puts up the shot and gets it. Quinn Huggins got room. Almost like an offensive pass interference in football, but she got the open look. That was all she needed. She's got eight points, and it's back to a double-digit edge. Miller, back to the basket, has the ball, give it to Pieta. Pieta, looking for daylight, goes inside, and that's knocked away. Blocked by Mosley, Pieta goes down, five on four for UTRGV. Open look, Hyman got it. And suddenly, the Vaqueros are red hot from the perimeter. And it's a 13-point UTRGV edge, it's their biggest. Well, the, birth, the worst part of this is UTRGV is really feeling it. You can just feel it in the gym. The momentum is theirs. Miller muscles her way to the hoop. We haven't seen much of that in this second half, and they need it. She's got 19 points. Sharon, two off of her career high. Huggins with the ball out front. Poked away by Cephas. She gets it back. Goes away from the screen, and again, Cephas just swatting at the ball. She swatted out of bounds, but before that, she reached in and picked up her third foul. Look at that nice little step back. Yeah, that was nice. And then look at Miller getting in front of her defender. Her, fe her defender got behind her hips. Well, Miller knows nobody's going to outmuscle her. And yeah. She's got enough tricks in her bag to know how to get free. It's her, great body work. From the free throw line, nothing but net. And again, UTRGV red hot from the perimeter. 58-45. Lopes have to make sure that they stay within themselves offensively, but they've got to get something moving. Beautiful spin move. Sharon Miller faking the pass, going to the hoop. 21 points for the senior. Here's Graham. Out front, open look, Sampson for three, no. What do you know, they're human. Pieta got the first step and got the rebound before Turk came around. She was knocked down, and again, Pieta wincing on that tender ankle. The foul is on Turk. Female going to the basket there. She had a lot of options to kind of flip the ball up at, at the top, and eventually just decided to take it to the hole and go strong. Tula breaks the press. And UTRGV backs out of the trap, nearing the midpoint of the fourth quarter. Cephas out for Akula. They give it to Pieta. Runs the baseline. Goes underneath. Throws it inside. Pinballed around. Luckily goes back to Pieta. Give it to Howard. That shot short. Long rebound belongs to Dowell. Again, the Lopes come up empty. Graham comes down. Knocked away by Cephas. Great hands by AJ. And then Dowell reaches in. Knocks her down. Picks up the foul. Cephas has been very active throughout the entire game with those hands. Sometimes she's picked up a foul, but most times she's been able to get it cleanly, including that three-point block that we saw that was a highlight in the first half. Here's Pieta working hard. Give it for Howard. Cephas out at the high post. Past the midpoint of the fourth quarter. Pierre again on the drive. That one won't go. Miller came around, cleanly took the ball away from two different Vaqueros, took a shot in the mouth, and then gets fouled. What a play. There's that great penetration, and then look at Miller going to the basket. See, she had it. 
she had it and it got knocked away. So, yeah, she's just worked hard in there. So Miller is going to go to the floor, but or going to go to the line. But first things first, I think they're going to make sure she's not bleeding from the mouth. And a timeout is called. 4.50 left to go. And the Lopes trying to battle back. It's UTRGV 58, GCU 47, right here on GCU TV. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career, while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Jim Howe, Tom Kuyper back here at GCU Arena as the t-shirts being thrown into the stands. And Tom, I think Sharon Miller just wants to play Saturdays in January because she's fantastic. 21 points, set a career high a week ago in that three overtime victory in Seattle, and she's matched it already with 450 to go here against UTRGV. Yeah, and then add eight rebounds to that, and she's on her way to a double double. So, yeah, she's been everything to that uh, UTRGV can handle and without uh, Sharon Miller for this great team, the team would be hurting tonight. Where's that energy? Where's the penetration? Where's getting that ball in the middle? They got to figure that out. They got to come in with a little bit more momentum. And the high low was so effective for them in that first half between Cephas and Miller. They just haven't been able to really find that. But Miller is saying, you know what? I don't care about the high low. If you're not going to be able to get the pass to me because of their defense, I'm just going to work and get it. She did that here. She went over the top cleanly of two different defenders to get the offensive board. And as a result, she drew the fourth foul of the night on Madison Northcutt, who has been a force in the middle for UTRGV, and she rewards herself with free throws. She makes the first. She's now four for five from the strike. Try to make it a single-digit deficit for GCU, which she does, and she now has a new career high of 23 points. 58-49. The Carrolls have led for most of the way since the midpoint of the third quarter. Tapia out front for Quinn Huggins. Huggins gets it inside, cut off his Hyman, and that pass knocked away. Gotten back by Megan Johnson with a buzzer on the UTRGV shot clock. She'll drive on Howard, keeps coming, spins, puts it up, that's knocked away by Miller. Goes though to Tapia, she'll spin in the lane, she'll put it up again. And UTRGV just refuses to, re to give up driving inside. That's right, they're going in, they're going in, they use that clock beautifully. They wasted 30 seconds and got two points out of it. Time becoming a factor, 409 left to go. Still a double digit deficit for the home team. Miller wanting somebody to come get the ball, it's Pieta. A dozen seconds on the shot clock. Pieta with the drive. Off the glass. Won't go. Rebound down to the floor. Mosley scoops it up. UTRGV getting a lot of second shots each time they come down. Not so much for GCU. Tapia almost traveled. Got away with it. Johnson with the spin inside. That one off the glass. No. Mosley kept it alive. And as Miller knocked it out of her hand, she knocked her down. And I believe that's going to cause Shea Ron her second personal foul it is. And you can't give them second chances. Not when you're down by 11 with just under four minutes. You got to get that ball to go. And that's the last foul to give for either team. GCU is already in the bonus. And UTRGV will be the next time there's an infraction on GCU. Non-shooting foul here, but that gives the Vigueros a chance to run some more clock. And Hyman will bring it out front. Here's Tapia. Tapia, the backup point guard, thought about the back door, instead gives it to Mosley. From 15, got it. And even the bigs are now getting wow. shots from outside. Mosley's first field goal, and it's 62-49, which again equals the biggest lead. We talked about how the last five contests between these two teams 
have been six points or less. But now GCU, to try and keep that string going, has to rally with 3.05 left. Ten on the shot clock. Got to do something. Here's Caldwell driving on Johnson. Has it stripped away at the last minute, out of bounds. GCU will get it back, but with only five seconds to get a shot off. Caldwell will end down to the right of own bucket. Lob for Miller. Bring it down, put it up, won't go. Took another hard shot, but she'll have free throws. That foul on Megan Johnson. Right now, if you don't know what to do with it, if your offense isn't going, just set up plays for Miller. Put her underneath. Let her go to work. Lane Lord running out of chicklets in front of the UTRGB bench, hoping that his team can come up with a road win, but the home team trying to come back. And Miller's first free throw is not good. Two minutes, 56 seconds remaining in regulation. Miller trying to add to her career high. Free throw, good. 24 points for the senior center. Full court pressure defense employed by the Lopes. Long pass, here's Mosley. Mosley moving in, almost lost it. Gave it out front for Johnson, and now they'll reset. Time very much on the side of the road team. UTRGV trying to win only for the second time in the last seven games. Johnson, spin, out front. Here is... Michelle Hyman for Huggins. Huggins backs away, hand in her face, wow. and still gets the shot to go over Cephas. Well, they are working that clock, and they're scoring. Not much more you could do if you were A.J. Cephas. And now it's desperation time for the Lopes down 14. Caldwell. They got to get moving. 12 on the shot clock. Miller at the high post. She starts to back in. Spins on Mosley. Has it tied up. Mosley anticipated. Possession arrow favors UTRGV. Look this nice smooth step back by Huggins. Wow, that was big time. Look at that right foot stepping towards the basket and then hopping back. Nice step back. A lot of people at wow. Millennium High School saw that for four years down in Avondale. The Phoenix native burning the home team. Inside of two minutes, and now UTRGV content to spread the floor. Akula trying to pressure a deal turn. Off for Northcutt, high post. Hand off here, Sampson. Sampson fakes, spin, blocked by Cephas. Beautiful play by AJ. Lopes with the ball, now they've got to hurry. Minute 35 left to go. They need a good shot. Miller looking in for Cephas, gets it to her. Back for Miller from 16, that one off the mark. And it's Sampson with the rebound, make that Jamaica Dow. And time running out on the Lopes. And right now, not they are content to not foul with only 70 seconds remaining. Ram running clock off. Comes around the screen with 10 on the shot clock. Cross court. Here's Sampson. Spinning on Miller. And that one swatted away, but it goes right to the lap of Dow. She'll fire a desperation three. Won't go. And that'll be a 30-second shot clock violation. But they did what they wanted. Lane Lord applauding the effort as there's only 54.7 seconds remaining in regulation. And Nicole Powell is going to call a timeout. We will keep it here with 54.7 seconds remaining and time running out quickly on the Lopes to try and get a perfect homestand. And it really was the defense of that deep, or the difference of that defensive intensity in that third quarter, Tom. Yeah, something happened. I mean, where to go? They had the lead and he looked up at the clock already. They were down by 10 points. It happened so fast. But it happened because of the lack of intensity on the defensive end. They just didn't have it. They were letting UTRGV drive into the key. They run that little weave up on top, and they spread the floor out, and it opened it up, and there was nobody stopping them from going inside. And it just hurt them. We had three Sanderson Ford keys to the game, and that was certainly one of them. 
was that they needed to keep up that defensive intensity and keep moving their feet like they did in the win over the Aggies. Here's a cool half of the timeout. Fires a three, and that one won't go. Dowell with a rebound, and it looks as though UTRGV, after getting swept in this season series a year ago by the Cole Powell's Lopes, are going to strike first blood. The two teams will meet in a month in Edinburgh, Texas. Yeah, this is too bad. You knock off the number one team, New Mexico State, and you just can't follow it up the next night with another win. Shot clock down to five. They'll get it in for Dowell. She'll drive the baseline. Leap and leaner won't go. It doesn't draw iron. North Tech will follow. Will it count? Yes, it will. And that's the way this second half is gone for GCU. 14 seconds to go. And the Vaqueros are going to split their road swing after losing in Bakersfield on Thursday. And the Lopes will have to settle for a split of their homestand after getting that huge win over the Mexico State two nights ago. The final horn. And the Vaqueros now even their overall record at 8-8, eight and eight, and they move to 2-1 and one in whack play. And meanwhile, the Lopes will suffer their second loss in whack play. Conference play. They are two and two and will fall to four and ten overall as the two teams shake hands in midcourt. And now the Lopes have to get ready for a homestand that for a road swing next week that could be a confidence builder for them, Tom, simply because Chicago State right now is struggling. If they can get a win Thursday night in the Windy City, that could make a big difference because they're still in the heart of that conference race. Yeah, you got to get something back because you can't lose that momentum. You just had two great wins. You can't take it away now with this. But well, our player of the got game Miller is a on You've always got hope. Yeah, absolutely. And Sharon really set the tone early. She had 12 points at halftime and six for six in her first six field goals. And then when they needed her to try and battle back in that fourth quarter, she certainly did it. She had nine of the 11 points that the Lopes scored in that final stanza. And she winds up besting her career high, which she said a week ago in that triple overtime victory in Seattle. She gets 24 points, six of eight from the free throw line. Most of those coming in the second half, but very strong, nine of 15 from the field. And even though UGRGV had those defensive and had that defensive intensity in the second half, they couldn't do much to stop the senior center. Well, you can see it too. They got beat on the boards. Um, they didn't shoot the ball well, 38%. They didn't defend. We talked about that, giving up 45% from the field. Yeah, just not a good game. 15 turnovers, that's, that's, that's too many. And many of those coming in the second half. When you look at assists and turnovers, you look at that ratio, just not there this afternoon. Well, and it also seems there's kind of a, a, a stat that's deceiving there as well, is that only two steals for GCU. And for some people, it's like, well, maybe you just don't get your hands on the ball. And they were able to slap away a lot of loose balls, just weren't able to come up with it. But that led to a lot of second shots for the Vaqueros when they had the chance to get it. And it seems like so far this season, when GCU has not been able to really get some steals and force some turnovers, bad things have happened to them. Well, it's all about the defense, the turnovers, the steals, the energy not coming from the weak side. There were several things to this afternoon that you just didn't get that we saw Thursday night against the Aggies. So the homestand is done, but as we look at the upcoming schedule, they'll head out on the road. That game against Chicago State, very winnable, and if they can get the ship right and quickly beat Chicago State, then they've got a big showdown next Saturday against UMKC, who came into the afternoon undefeated in conference play, and then they'll be home two weeks from today. That Saturday afternoon, January the 26th, they'll take on Cal Baptist. That's a 2 p.m. tip-off. Hopefully, you will be here cheering them up in person. Now, keep in mind, for, for those of you on GCU TV, we hope you'll stick around because we'll move it to Antelope Gym for GCU men's volleyball as they'll take on Ottawa. Again, that's a 4 o'clock start, so hope you'll stick around on GCU TV. We want to thank our friends from the WAC Digital Network for joining us all across the country. And so until we talk to you next time, for my partner, Tom, Tom Kuyper, this is Jim Howell speaking to you from GCU Arena, reminding you the final score, Texas Rio Grande Valley 67. GCU 50. Have a great afternoon, everyone.